This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. This is a 25-year-old young man who presents with poor vision in his left eye since many years and he has a traumatic cataract. He gives history of a penetrating injury to the eye about 7 years back following which he had this poor vision for many years. Now examination reveals a corneal scar suggestive of the injury site and also we see this area of the iris which appears to be defective in this region indicating the site of probable penetration and the corresponding area of the lens shows dimpling of the anterior capsule probably because of the absorbed lens matter in this area at this point presence of a pre-existing posterior capsule tear cannot be ruled out anyways i am ready with my vitrector and a standby multipiece iol to deal with the worst case scenario so let's begin the surgery. I am giving 0.5 ml of lignocaine in the posterior septum space. At this point, let me go through what was going in my head and uh, how did I plan the surgery. My primary objective would be to ensure that the IOL is placed in the bag after extraction of the cataract. But in the event of an adverse situation, uh, owing to the presence of a probable pre existing posterior capsular tear, I must at least be able to have a good anterior capsular support to place the multipiece IOL in sulcus with optic capture. My major concerns are uh, the area of the anterior capsule which has sustained penetration uh, looks calcified, and I don't know whether the posterior capsule is also punctured at this point. And making a rexus is going to be difficult owing to this area of calcified quadrant. So I have planned an eccentric smaller rexus to avoid this difficult area. So I'll be considering to enlarge this area of the rexus depending upon how the situation presents itself later. The rexus is begun by puncturing the anticapsule with a needle and then the tearing is being continued using a forceps. I'm careful to avoid this difficult area now. Slowly and steadily the capsule rexus is completed and it has turned out exactly the way I intended it to be. It's eccentric, oval and slightly smaller but it is continuous and that was important for me. Time to deal with the lens matter. I go in with my bimanual irrigation aspiration cannula and since he is a young man I don't expect a nucleus but as the lens matter is aspirated I can see the small soft nucleus which I managed to bring it out of the bag into the anterior chamber, it needs to be aspirated with the wider bored phaco tip. Before coming out of the eye, OVD is injected into the anterior chamber to prevent it from getting shallow. Now I'm going in with my phaco handpiece and I'm using very low power to emulsify and aspirate the soft nucleus. And it is done quite easily without much of a fuss. But what I'm seeing now is not a pleasant sight at all. I'm seeing a thick plaque on the posterior capsule and it's exactly in the visual axis. It is quite dense and I thought I need to deal with it now itself. Yagging it later would be one option but it was quite thick and so I decided to try to remove it now itself. But before doing it, I have to remove the remaining cortex. The cortex is removed quite easily but I'm trying to evaluate this problematic area here and it becomes obvious to me that in this area the anticapsule and the posterior capsule are fused to each other. But luckily it is just restricted to this one quadrant. So I need to be careful to avoid placing the haptic of the lens in this quadrant. So time to remove the plaque now. I have filled the bag with HPMC and I penetrate the plaque with a bent 26G needle. I am hoping that this will create a cleavage plane for me to hold the edge and then peel off the plaque. I am also aware that it's quite possible to tear the posterior capsule at this point during all these maneuvers. The flap is grasped with the forceps and it's evident now that I have not caught the posterior capsule. The plaque is being carefully peeled off. Uh, this part in the mid periphery is quite tenacious and I am unable to remove it. However, the remaining part of the plaque is easily peeled off. At this point, I decide to enlarge the rexus in this difficult area so that I can have access to remove this remaining plaque. 
but i'm very skeptical of enlarging this area because of the capsular adhesion which is having and as expected and as i'm trying to tear it it heads towards the equator well i stop it there the remaining capsular flap is held with the forceps and then cut with the micro scissors so now we have an capsular opening which is all right it's but you have one area which is weak there now i go back with my forceps to deal with the remaining plaque here it's quite tenacious and thick and i could remove some part of it but some part of it was looking more complicated to remove it so i let the remaining part be as it is as this is the area of the penetrating injury and i would not want to open up any underlying posterior capsular tear at this stage so i leave that area as it is and now is the time to place the lens into the bag the bag is filled with ovd and a single piece hydrophobic lens is placed into the bag now dialing the lens is consciously avoided because of the fused anterior and the posterior capsule in this quadrant hence the proximal haptic is gently maneuvered into the bag so now we have both the haptics in the bag secure and away from the area of the fused anterior and posterior capsule quadrant so time to remove the ovd from behind the lens and in front of the lens the wounds are hydrated that's it the case is done now this is how the eye looked on the next post op day patient was quite happy with his visual outcome and that's it the case was done thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful